Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned in to episode 422 of Linux in the Ham Shack, the most terrific amateur radio podcast on the internet. And this is our weekender edition. And once again, I'm completely falling down. I'm trying to remember which weekender this is, but it doesn't matter. It's the weekender. So <laughs> we're just going to I think talk it's 75. About 75, 74. Yeah. I think I put it on the top there. I say 74 last time. I didn't change that. So it's 75th. Oh, okay. So it's a 75th weekender. All right. Good deal. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how to read. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. So the weekender is where we talk about upcoming events, both in amateur radio and in open source and contests and all kinds of things that you can participate in in the hobbies of open source and amateur radio and sometimes combine the two together. And then we move into hedonism where we talk about food and wine and beer and alcohol and music and just whatever we want to talk about and all the things that make life worth living. So let's just jump into it. But before we do, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm Russ K5TUX. I'm Cheryl W5MOO. And I'm Bill NE4RD. And as we usually start the weekender, we go to amateur radio and Bill fills us in from the contest calendar.com, the most amazing contest calendar.com or whatever it is you say. <laughs> and tell us all about the upcoming amateur radio contests and QSO parties for the next couple of weeks. So what do we got? Yeah. So uh, this weekend we have the Feld Hell Sprint. And it runs from zero Zulu to 2359 Zulu on July 31st. Bands there are 160 through six meters. Uh, what modes? Feld Hell. And what is Feld Hell? Well, what's Hell Schreiber? Hell Schreiber or Hell is a method of sending or and receiving text using facsimile technology. It is unique in the in that the characters are not decoded, but painted or printed on the screen. Uh, there are several modes of Hellschreiber, the most popular being single tone version called Feld Hell, an off key keyed, uh, sorry, on off keyed system with uh, 122.5 dots per second or about 35 word per minute text rate. Uh, Feld Hell is uh, narrow bandwidth, about 75 hertz. Feld Hell also has the advantage of uh, having a low duty cycle, meaning your transmitter will run much cooler with this mode. And it's a pretty cool, fun mode to run. <laughs> you can do it with, uh, with of course, FL Digi. Um, and um, I'm not sure if other, I guess there's probably other ones that do it too, but FL Digi works great with this particular mode. And it's kind of fun because, you know, if you're a little off, you'll see like the text will be slanted in the paint job. <laughs> or if they're drifting, you'll see the text sort of move around in the uh, paint. It's literally like reading ticker tape on your waterfall. It's uh, it's pretty fun. So if you haven't done it before, it's a great time to get on it. It's the sprint. It's all day on July 31st. So uh, so get at it. Uh, also, we have the Russian Worldwide Multi-Mode Contest. This one runs from 1200 Zulu July 31st to 1159 Zulu August 1st. Bands there are 160 through 10, no work or 60 meters, of course. Uh, modes, sing, uh, CW, single sideband, RIDI, and BPSK 63. Uh, the repeated contacts are permitted on different bands and different modes, providing that the contact will not will be made not earlier than in three minutes. So that means you can't just switch modes and make another contact, uh, switch modes <laughs> with the same station. You'd have to come back and uh, give it uh, give it a rest and uh, then work them. Uh, so not quite uh, not quite like switch bands, work them, switch bands, work them, switch bands, work them, uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a, a, a nice, fun, multi-mode contest. You can get into whatever mode you're interested in and uh, work work some uh, some Russians. Or the ROC, right, in the Olympics? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the Russian Olympic Committee. Uh, and for state QSO party challenges or worked out QSO parties, we have Missouri. The misery, or, or however you like to say it, is, uh, is, is the one state that is running uh, this weekend. So uh, next weekend we have, let's see, we have the North America QSO party. So that's uh, it's time for that again. Uh, it's running from 1800 Zulu on August 7th to 0559 Zulu, August 8th. Uh, bands there are 160 through 10, no work or 60 meters. Uh, mode is CW. So this is the CW version, and it's always a fun blast to do. You can uh, make a side teams of five amateurs from anywhere in the world, you know, anywhere in the U.S., <laughs> And uh, have a have a little team competition on top of uh, you know working your section and you know and so on and so forth. So uh, check that out. Uh, also, we have uh, if you're if you're into VHF, UHF, SHF, and and higher, uh, we have the AWRL uh, 222 megahertz and up distance contest. 
And this one runs from 1800 Zulu on August 7th to 1800 Zulu on August 8th. And I obviously put the, had the pasted the wrong bands in there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's 222 and up. So that means you're going to go from 222 to 241 gigahertz. So get them gigahertz thingies out there. Uh, <laughs> mode, any mode you possibly can use, uh, uh, you can use on this particular contest. And you want to work as many stations as possible. And you can use any allowable mode. Uh, a station in a specific grid locator may be contacted from the same location only once on each band, regardless of mode. So work them if you can. And for state QSA party challenges, there are none that weekend. So probably because the NAQP is going on. Um, but yeah, yeah, it looks like a good couple of weeks in contests. Uh, a lot of fun to be had on the bands. What do you got for special events? So for special events, the first one we have is the world's largest teapot special event. This will be operating August 1st through the 8th. I didn't put the time because it's all day. Call signs are Whiskey Zero Tango through Whiskey Nine Tango, all numbers inclusive, and a special station, Whiskey Victor 8 Hotel Alpha Tango. Frequencies are 3.573, 18.1, 7.074, 14.074, but they're actually saying they'll be all over the place. So be looking for those stations everywhere, on every band, in every mode, CW Digital Phone. This event celebrates the world's largest teapot located in the pottery capital of the world. But it doesn't say where that actually is. I think it does somewhere, but... (laughs) Um, This is our fifth year, and it will be huge. We are setting up special event stations all over the country with seasoned operators from all call areas. Some of these operators were involved in the Last Man Standing special event. There will be several opportunities to work these special event stations. There will be a certificate after the event denoting all the stations, including endorsements for the bonus station and clean sweep. The stations are, I already said, Whiskey Zero Tango through Whiskey Nine Tango and the bonus station WV8HAT. And more information will, of course, be linked in the show notes. It's Next, Chester, we have Chester, West Virginia. West Virginia. Okay. Chester, West Virginia. Chester. Gotcha. So next, we have the countdown to the 100th anniversary of the discovery of Pluto. Uh, this will be operating August 6th through 8th. This is sort of like a bonus addendum because I think this was originally run back in February, and they're doing it again. Call signs Whiskey 7 Papa and Whiskey 7 Papa Stroke Zero. Frequencies are about 7.29, 14.29, 21.29 but probably all over the place. Back by heavy demand, the North Arizona DX Association is conducting a 10-year special event countdown to the 100th anniversary of the discovery of Pluto by Clyde Tombaugh at Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is the last opportunity for contact in the inaugural year. Each year, Doug Tombaugh and 3PDT, Clyde Tombaugh's nephew, will be operating during the event as W7P-0, stroke and a contact with him counts as an additional endorsement on the certificate. Each year, a contact with Doug or his small team can be used as an annual contact, but also can be used as a wild card to fill in any missing annual endorsement that may be needed. This will allow a clean sweep in the 10-year event, even when a, a year is missed. See our website for certificate and QSL information. And then it said the ninth planet out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I think is it's it a planet a, or is it just an is object? It's a dwarf planet it's now. A, yeah. It's, but it's, who knows? It's, yeah. Mess up all our childhood teaching of the solar system. (laughs) Yeah. And hams haven't figured out Pluto bounce yet. So, you know, but maybe that's coming someday. (laughs) All right. And finally, we have the Missouri Bicentennial Commemoration. This will be operating August 7th through the 15th. All bands, all modes, all over the place. Uh, Call sign will be Kilo Zero Bravo. CW Digital Phone. Check all the bands. Check everywhere. You'll find them somewhere. Well, between the 7th and the 15th anyway. In association with the August 2021 celebration of the Missouri State Bicentennial, there will be a first-ever amateur radio activation of Missouri's first capital state historic site on August 10th. An amateur radio station operated by the St. Charles Amateur Radio Club using the call sign K0B will be active on the first capital site on August 10th. The schedule of operation will be announced as the date gets closer. The first capital site also qualifies for the National Parks on the Air program, NBOTA, with the identifier K3349. Additional POTA style activations from both the first capital site and from adjacent frontier parks or from the adjacent frontier park are possible on other dates, depending on weather and operator availability. A certificate and QSL are available and more information is linked, of course, in the show notes. And there's a few other special events coming up too. There's one in like commemorating the 50th year of Apollo 11 and some other ones too, but you know, we can't tell you about all of them. So moving on from that, we have announcements um first of all 
the mailing list is working again. So I no longer have to say I'm working on the mailing list because it is working. Yay. <laughs> a link to signing up to the mailing list is on the website, lhspodcast.info. I don't believe archives are working yet, but I'm working on that. And if you were signed up before, you should still be. But if you have not signed up for the mailing list, you probably should. So check it out. And just go to the website, click on the link, and sign up. It's very low volume. We will not spam you, I assure you. And for a Linux in the Ham Shack ham radio challenge for this fortnight, I put in operate QRP on a mode that isn't considered weak signal and attempt to make at least three contacts. So that would be like five watts phone or one watt CW or something. Just, you know, operate QRP. See if you can do it. Forget this. <laughs> forget this hundred watts in a wire. Try one watt in a wire. <laughs> yeah, or See, half a watt or two half a watt. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, make make five watts QRO for your next come time. Mm. So <laughs> all right. Well that's all I got in there for that. And then as we usually do, we go from amateur radio topics over to open source topics, and this weekend's gonna not be any different. So what do we have for a distribution to try this time around? Yeah, we have uh Kaizen a Linux 1.7 rolling release. Uh, this is uh, Kaizen Linux is a distribution for IT professionals. So all you amateurs, just go away. No. <laughs> it's based on the Debian GNU Linux distribution. It is a complete operating system whose originality is to provide a set of tools dedicated to system administration and covering all the needs for diagnosing and dealing with faults or failures of an installed system and its components. Most important system tools are available. It is thus uh, possible to modify the partitioning of hard disks to save the data or the system to repair the file system and to recover lost data or to reactivate the boot manager to carry out a deep formatting of a hard drive, diagnostics of networks at several levels. And yeah, this is all their copy read, right? Uh, creation and management of PKI, virtualization, automation, containerization, and all other kindizations you need. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, some fixes this uh, latest release, which uh, was just done this month. They now have a new ButterFS mount options for Kaizen Linux. Uh, they have a removal of the no A time option to allow the deletion of snapshots. Uh, removed GKSU in favor of Polkit for graphical tool launchers. Removed unused dependencies on Conky Colors. Added Smiley's support for OpenVPN client on all interfaces. Uh, updated Linux to uh, 5.10.46, so a nice new kernel. That's great. Updated Firefox to version 88. Uh, guests are now installed by Kaizen Build via the common folder and are removed automatically by the installer depending on the environment in which Kaizen is installed. Uh, tools for the administrators categorized in several meta packages in order to install or uninstall only a part of the system tools. Uh, translations as well for the true, uh, uh, as well the description of the third uh, of the launchers. Boring. Uh, I know it's horrible. <laughs> Live system only console available. It's it's uh, replaced Google Duck Duck Go thingy or Bobber. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it has a lot of lot of updates and changes. If you're uh, if you're into uh, using Debian and you want it to be a rolling release, Kaizen is definitely an option. So check it out. Link to that is in the show note and uh, enjoy. I'm going to read like the first word of each bullet and see what it comes out with. <laughs> Guest tools, translations, removed live, net install, fixed, replace, fixed, GNS3, update, change, tools, updated, added, added. There you go. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> lots of, lots of fixes, right? Lots of fixes. <laughs> At least it was more entertaining than, than the blathering on of all their bullet points. My goodness. Yeah, I know. If, you, if you need Kaizen, just download it and use it for crying out loud. <laughs> read, the, read the change log on your own. <laughs> uh, anyway, so moving on from that distribution of disaster, uh, we bring Cheryl in here to talk about upcoming open source events over the next couple of weeks or probably a little bit longer, actually. Yeah. So the first one is the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference. It's July 29th and 30th. It is online. The cost is $55 to $230. It's literally right now. It's Yeah, it's literally like right now. Yeah. <laughs> Probably should have taken it out, but hey. Probably, yeah. Well, it's not over well, yet. It's not over yeah, yet. Yeah, no, it's not over yet. People hear this tomorrow, I guess. So Maybe. 
Maybe, yeah. I, w- I wasn't uh, the... paying attention to dates clearly, so you know. Yeah, yeah. obviously not. So. Well, some, somebody <laughs> cut and pasted it in here because it, it wasn't was me, me, Bill. Yeah, I left it in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 it so wasn't so. me, Bill. So anyway, the information <laughs> regarding this is the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference (BOSC) has been held out annually since 2000. In July 2020, BCC 2020, the first informatics community conference, brought together the Galaxy Community Conference, otherwise known as GCC, and BOSS 2020 in a joint online meeting that attracted over 600 participants from 62 countries. BOSS covers all aspects of open source bioinformatics, software, and open science, including but not limited to open science and reproductible research, bio. Uh, open biomedical data, data science, open approaches to translational bioinformatics, developer tools, and libraries, inclusion, outreach, and training. So if you get this, you want more information about it, it's in the show notes. Our next conference, which is next week, is the ASWF Open Source Days. It's August 4th and 5th. It's online. It's free. It's a two-day conference hosted by the Academy Software Foundation. Attend to get the latest updates on Academy Software Foundation projects and other popular open source projects used for visual effects, animation, and image creation. You'll have the ability to collaborate with the Academy Software Foundation community to share best practices and innovate together. You can expect to network with other attendees, attend presentations with live Q&A, and much more. More information in the show notes. The next conference is uh, the International Conference on OSS and Future Trends. It's August 9th and 10th. It's online, and the cost is three to 300 to 500 euros. And this conference aims to bring together leading academic scientists, researchers, and research scholars to exchange and share their experiences and research results on all aspects of open source software and future trends. Excuse me. It also provides a premier interdisciplinary platform for researchers, practitioners, and educators to present and discuss the most recent innovations trends and concerns as well as practical challenges encountered and solutions adopted in fields of open source excuse me open source software and future trends and information for that is in the show notes okay sorry you caught me typing (laughs) because we have we have more people showing up so cool all right so there's a couple of open source events that are coming up in the near future the very near future in one case uh so check those out if you want and it uh, looks like things are still in the virtual space, although there have been a few that have opened up to actual local events, but they have been few and far between. And the way things are going, those will probably dry up again here pretty quick. Yeah, I have a $10 bet that invention does not happen next year. Stop it. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, I know. All right. So moving on, we have the Linux and the Hamshack open source challenge. And I just threw in here something. Explore a free and open source virtualizations platform that is not VMware or VirtualBox, such as Zen Overt or Proxmox. Something different. Play around with different kinds of virtualization. It's where everything's going these days. And that brings us down past all the amateur radio and open source topics for this, the 75th, we hope. Weekender, and that brings us to hedonism. And we always start hedonism with food because we're all human and we all need food, except for the breatharians. Yeah, go look that up. <laughs> um, and while you're doing that, Cheryl is going to tell you about a recipe that you can do while you're reading about the breatharians and all the things they don't eat while you go ahead and eat something for yourself. Okay. I'm sorry, that was probably a really weak introduction. But anyway, you know where we're at. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so anyway, um, as I was telling Bill earlier, Missouri, summer. It's a bad mix. You know, insane temps, high humidity, and air conditioners just cannot keep houses cool. So this recipe will keep your house cool, yet give you a great meal in the end. And it's pizza. And who doesn't love pizza? So anyway, my recipe this week is for a slow cooker deep dish pizza. For this, you'll need a half pound of bulk mild Italian sausage, or substitute the meat of your preference, one can of refrigerated pizza crust, a half cup of pizza sauce, a half cup of red or green bell peppers, a quarter cup 
of chopped onion and one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. And of course, substitute whatever vegetables you want as well. It doesn't really matter. Spray a six quart oval slow cooker with cooking spray in a skillet. Cook your sausage. Uh, if it, you know, if you choose sausage or hamburger, uh, make sure you get that cooked until it's no longer pink and drain it. Unroll your pizza dough, fold in half crosswise, place it in your slow cooker, press it on the bottom and up one inch or so up the sides. Spread pizza sauce directly over the dough. Uh, top with half of your sausage, half of your veggies, half of your cheese. Remain, yeah, repeat with remaining meat, veggies, cheese. Place a clean dish towel under the lid of your slow cooker to absorb any uh, condensation from your lid because you don't want your crust wet. And cook that for 30 to 60 minutes. Take your, um, or excuse me, cook it for 45 minutes. Take your uh, removable liner out of your crock pot, your ceramic dish, turn it around, put it back in there, cook it for 30 to 60 minutes till your crust is brown. Loosen it with a, with a spatula or a knife and cut and serve. And again, substitute whatever meat or veggies you want. Make it a breakfast pizza with eggs and sausage, whatever you want. It's, it's pretty versatile, so... And that, that is pizza. And Russ loves pizza. I, pizza and I don't get along very well, but I'm definitely seeing this in our future. So well, I'm looking forward to trying it whenever you decide to make it. All righty then. So. And uh, to go along with food, of course, you need drink. So what do you got for your mixed drink corner for this week? This week, I picked a really quick and easy drink. It's a very, it's a very summery and very tasty is the rum sunset. You'll need 12 ounces of orange juice, three ounces of white rum, two tablespoons of grenadine, and some lime slices for a garnish. Um, combine the orange juice and rum, um, put it in the glasses, you know, top it with some more orange juice and rum if you want. Just, you know, mix away, have fun, and enjoy. So That is a convoluted recipe. It sounds like yeah, it sounds it, like a screwdriver made with rum. <laughs> no, well, it's a tequila sunrise. A tequila sunrise. Yeah, it's a, te- yeah, it's a tequila rum, sunrise yeah. with rum. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I guess you can't go wrong with that. Well, yeah. no. I mean, I'd rather have the tequila sunrise, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people don't like tequila, so if not, you now have a rum sunrise, which is yeah. mm. a rum sunset. Oh, sunset. I'm sorry. Sunset. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Tequila and I used to get along great, and we don't get along very well anymore. So, yeah. rum, <laughs> vodka, or my Jim Brewer has a great uh, bit on tequila. So, if you're Usually, a fan of comedians, check out Jim Brewer's comedian his his bit on tequila. Yeah, yeah. tequila makes your clothes fall off, right? Yeah, you're saying like, tequila tends to make everybody's clothes fall off. So, no, I mean yes, that's the you know that's the stereotype but this this is even better than that so all right so moving on i have my drink corner for tonight and tonight i have lafroig select single malt scotch because a couple of days ago it was national scotch day so i thought i would do this one i've done the lafroig 10 but not the lafroig select and uh, according to their website Lafroig Select says, Our master distiller carefully draws whiskey matured the historic way in Oloroso sherry butts, Pedro Jimenez seasoned hogsheads, and first fill bourbon quarter casts to create this distinctive blend. The heart is drawn from a final maturation in New American Oak, a rarity in Scotch whiskey production, which adds bold flavor. The final edition is our quintessential single malt Scotch Lafroig 10, which is aged for a decade. With flavors of smoky peat, spicy oak, and a surprising sweetness, Lafroig Select is a fantastic introduction to peated whiskey. A hand-selected blend of single malt casks creates a unique character. So some brief details about this. It's 100% malted barley, obviously, because it's a single malt scotch. It's bottled at 80 proof, or 40%. It comes from Isla in Scotland. It's a very light gold, because 10 years in a barrel in scotland does not impart much color however it does impart much flavor uh the nose on it is really complicated really bold and really interesting there's all kinds of stuff in here and i probably could have put even more notes if i kept on nosing it but i got honey malt caramel peat vanilla pear granny smith apple 
and uh nondescript baking spices you could probably let your nose wander and let your brain figure out all the different kind of spicy notes that are in it i would certainly not even you know second guess you if you said things like pepper or cinnamon or nutmeg or allspice or or any of those things you can probably pick them all out and what's kind of interesting about the Laphroaig Select is it's blended in such a way is that the taste is not markedly different from the nose. It has all of those sort of complex elements. Uh, I picked up, you know, mostly peat, toasted wood, salted caramel, nuts, honey, apples, pepper, and uh, even a sort of briny saltiness. Some call it iodine, some call it Band-Aid, some call it, you know, whatever. It's a sort of quintessential Laphroaig uh, flavor note. But it's definitely in this as well, although this tends toward the sweeter and then the the briny, salty, peaty end. And the finish doesn't disappoint either. It's really, really long. It's got a nice, lengthy hint of peat, saltiness, vanilla, honey, apple, and uh, a general sweetness. And you can it sort of tails off into those spices as well and a little bit of toasted oak. So there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. You do have to like peated scotches. This is definitely one you could probably get into, even if you're not a big fan of peated scotches, because it's not quite as over the top as some of the other Isla scotches. Uh, but if this is not your thing, you're probably not going to like it. But this happens to be my kind of thing. I really love it. The bottle tends to run 50 to $55 for 750 milliliters. And it's, a, it's an easy 96 in my world. It's a fantastic scotch. And if you're if you're at all interested in uh, smoked or peated scotches, you should definitely try any of the Lafroy lines. So well, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest anybody try Lafroy if they don't like a peated because it's it's pretty peaty. The select is not as bad as the ten or some no, of the others. No, it's not. But it's also a little bit yeah. lower proof, so it's not quite as in your face. So. Right. But yeah, yeah, a it, lot of a lot of people can't get around that whole band aidy smoky thing. Yep, it definitely has to be along your flavor, you know, your palate profile or whatever. Um, but if it's anywhere near it, um, this is a good one. So that is Lefroy Select Single Malt Scotch, non age statement, but it's made with Lefroy Ten, so it's at least ten years old. So there you go. And Bill, you actually have something in here for your whatever corner. So what do you got for tonight? I have a, a Yellowstone Single Barrel Select store pick. Bottle I picked up uh, while I was in Kentucky. It's a uh, bottle at 102 proof, 51 ABV. Uh, it was from Liquor Barn in uh, Louisville. <laughs> and it was, uh, I guess, uh, 2016. And, of course, it's from the Limestone Branch Distillery. Um, yeah, which I didn't get to go to while I was there. But uh, I did go buy a bottle at the liquor store. And, uh, yeah, it um, smells really good. Oh, you should try it. I have I have a Yellowstone single barrel select as well. Um, from yeah, it one tastes of the, really good <laughs> from the place that's not giving you your cigars. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> which it doesn't really matter in this case because it's a fantastic, fantastic whiskey. But um, yeah, I don't know if yours is going to be any different than the one I have. I mean, because they're both single barrel, so I assume they're going to have some slightly different character. But it's fantastic to me. It was a butterscotch bomb. So yeah, it's very. Uh... Yeah, it's very uh, has a very sweet sweet taste to it, and being a higher proof, it uh, you know it's not it doesn't hit in the face or anything like that. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so good. Are you are you, are you uh, on vacation over there or what's it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> vacation. <baby. laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this right. is great. Yeah, it's good stuff. If you can get it, go get it. Yeah, Yellowstone's available everywhere because it's one of those ones that comes out of Bardstown. So it's, you know, you can find it. And and apparently they're doing a lot of this uh, high proof barrel select thing. So you're, you're, yeah, I, was, I was just, I was just reading an article where they said they started in 2016 doing some single barrels, but they were down proofing them. So they didn't get a lot of press. So I guess they fixed that since then. <laughs> yeah. So your liquor store probably has one of these. And if you see it on the shelf, I mean, it's not particularly expensive. It's like 50 or 60 bucks or something like that. Yeah, I don't re- I don't even remember what I paid for it in Kentucky, but I don't I don't think it was that much. It seemed cheaper. Probably, but I got it in a, in a retail store. So, yeah. All right, but check it out. Yellowstone single barrel select. 
Uh, all right. Well, that does it. We've come down to the end of the show. We've gone through the amateur radio. We've gone through the open source. We've gone through the hedonism. And we should probably let you all go so you can enjoy some of those hedonistic delights we have discussed on the program. But before we do that, we should mention the folks who are with us for the live recording. We had Don KC9ZMY, Ted WA0EIR, Tony K4XSS, Dan KF5TQN. It's a good thing I remember his call sign because I type of it. Uh, Don KB2YSI, Darren VK60K, and Steve K7HVT. Thanks, everybody, for being here, listening to this 75th edition of The Weekender, episode number 422 of Linux in the Ham Shack. We appreciate you all being here. Check out lhspodcast.info. Don't forget about the QSO Today Ham or Virtual Ham Expo on the 14th and 15th. We'll be doing a talk there. We hope to see you. And with that, everybody just go out, be hedonistic, have a great fortnight, and we'll talk to you again on the next episode. This has been episode number 422 of Linux in the Ham Shack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73.